The gospel of truth is a joy to those who have received from the Father of truth the gift of knowing him by the power of the Logos, who has come from the play Roma and who is the thought and the mind of the Father. He it is who is called the Savior, since that is the name of the work which he must do for the redemption of those who have not known the Father. For the name of the gospel is the manifestation of hope, since that is the discovery of those who seek him, because they all sought him after, they all sought him from whom it had come forth. You see, they all had been inside of him, inimitable, inconceivable one. Who is better than every thought. This ignorance of the Father brought about terror and fear, and the terror became dense like a fog that no one was able to see. Because of this, error became strong, but it worked on its highly substance, vainly, because it did not know the truth. It was in a fashion form while it was preparing in power and in beauty the equivalent of truth. This then was not a humiliation for him, the illimitable, inconceivable one, for they were as nothing. This terror and this forgetfulness and this figure of falsehood, whereas this established truth is unchanging, and perturbed and completely beautiful. <clears throat> For these reasons, do not take error too seriously. Thus, since it had no root, it was in a fog of regards. The father engaged in preparing works and forgetfulness and fears in order. By this means, to beguile those of the middle and to make them captive. The forgetfulness of error was not revealed. It did not become light beside the Father. Forgetfulness did not exist in the Father, although it existed because of him. What exists in him is knowledge. It was revealed so that forgetfulness might be destroyed and that they might not be Father. Since forgetfulness existed because they did not know the Father. If they then come to know the Father from the moment of forgetfulness, they cease to exist. From that moment on, forgetfulness will cease to exist. That is the gospel of Him whom they seek, which has revealed the perfect through the masses of the Father as the hidden mystery, Jesus the Christ. Through him he enlightened those who were in darkness because of forgetfulness. He enlightened them and gave them a path. And that path is the truth which he taught them. For this reason, error was angry with him, so it persecuted him. It was distressed by him. So it made him powerless. He was nailed to a cross. He became a fruit of the knowledge of the Father. He did not, however, destroy them because they ate it. He rather caused those who were ate of it to be joyful because of this discovery. And as for him, them he found in himself and him they found in themselves, the illimitable and inconceivable one, the perfect father, who made the all, in whom the all is, and whom the all loves, since he retained in himself the imperfection, which he had not given to the all. The father was not jealousy. What jealous indeed is there between him 
and these numbers. For even if the iron had received their perfection, they would not have been able to approach the perfection of the Father because he retained their perfection in himself, giving it to them as a way to return to him and as knowledge unique in perfection. He is the one who set the all in order and in whom the all existed and whom the all lacked. But one of those who have knowledge he desired that they know him and they love him. What is it that all lack, if not the knowledge of the Father? <clears throat> he became a guide quiet and in leisure. In the middle of a school, he came and spoke the word as a teacher. Those who were wise in their estimation came to put him to the test. But he discredited them as empty-headed people. They hated him because they really were not wise men. After all this came also the little children, those who possessed the knowledge of the Father. When they became strong, they were taught the aspects of the Father's face. They came to know, and they were known. They were glorified, and they gave glory. In their heart, the living book of the living was manifest. The book which was written in the thought and in the mind of the Father, and from before the foundation of the all, is being incomprehensible, but of him is in that incomprehensible part of him. This is the book which no one found possible to take, since it was reserved for him who will take it and be slain. No one was able to be manifest from those who believed in the salvation as long as that book had not appeared. For this reason, the compassionate, faithful Jesus was patient in his suffering until he took that book, since he knew that his death meant life for many. Just as in the case of a will which was not yet, has not been opened, for the fortune of the deceased master of the house is hidden, so also is the case of all which had been hidden as long as the father of all was invisible and unique in himself, in whom every space had his soul. For this reason Jesus appeared. He took the book of his own, he was nailed to the cross. He affixed the edict of the Father to the cross. Oh, such a great teaching. He abases himself even unto death, though he is called eternal life. He abases himself even to death, though he is clothed in eternal life. Having divested himself of these perishable rags, he clothed himself in incorruptibility, which no one could possibly take from him. Having entered into the empty territory of fears, he passed before those who were stripped by forgetfulness, being both knowledge and perfection, proclaiming the things which are in the heart of the Father, so that he became the wisdom of those who are received instruction. But those who are taught believing who are inscribed in the book of the living, than for themselves receiving instruction from the Father, turning to him again. Since the perfection of the all is in the Father, it is necessary for the all to ascend to him. Therefore, if one has knowledge, he gets what belongs to him and draws itself to himself. 
for he who is ignorant is deficient and is a great deficiency since he lacks that which will make him perfect. Since the perfection of all is in the Father, it is necessary for the all to ascend to him and for each one of uh, to get things which are his. He registered them first, having prepared them to give it to those who came from him. Those whose name he knew were called last. And the one who has knowledge is he whose name the Father has pronounced. For he whose name has not been spoken is ignorant. Indeed, how shall one hear if his name has not been uttered? For he who remains ignorant until the end is a creature of forgetfulness and will perish with it. It is not so. Why, if this is not so, why have these wretches no name? Why do they have no sound? Hence, if one has knowledge, he is from above. If he is called, he hears, he replies, and he turns toward him who called him, and ascends to him, and he knows that he is called. Since he has knowledge, he does the will of him who called him. He desires to please him, and he finds rest. He receives a certain name. He who thus is going to have knowledge knows whence he came and whither he is going. He knows that he is a person who, having become intoxicated, has turned from his drunkenness and having come to himself has restored what is himself. He has turned many from error. He went before them their own places from which they departed when they erred because of the death of him who surrounds any place, whereas there is nothing that surrounds him. It was a great wonder. They were in the Father without knowing him, and they were able to live on their own since they were not able to contain him and know him in whom they were. For indeed, his will had not come forth from him. For he revealed it as a knowledge with which all its emanations, emanations agree, namely the knowledge of the living book, which he revealed to eons, eons, at last as his letters, uh, displaying to them that these are not mere vowels nor consonants, so that one may read and think of something void of meaning. On the contrary, they are the letters which convey the truth. They are pronounced only when they are known. Each letter is a perfect truth, like a perfect book. For they are letters written by the hand of the wind, since the Father wrote them for the ions, so that they, by means of his letter, I come to know the Father. <coughs> While his wisdom meditates the logos, and since his teaching expresses it, his knowledge has been revealed. His honor is a crown upon it. Since his joys agree with it, his glory exalted. It has revealed his name. It has obtained his rest. His love took bodily form around it. His trust embraced it. Thus the logos of the Father goes forth into the all, being the fruit of his heart and expression of his will. It supports all. It chooses and also takes the form of the all, purifying it and causing it to return to the Father and to the Mother, Jesus the utmost sweetness. The Father opens his vessel 
but his bosom is the Holy Spirit. He reveals his hidden self, which is his Son, so that through the compassion of the Father, the ends may know him. And the weary in search for the Father and they raise themselves in him and raise themselves in him, knowing that this is rest. After all, they had failed what was incomplete. He did away with form. He did away with form. The form of it is the world. That which is found. For where there is envy and strife, there is incompleteness. But where there is unity, there is completeness. Since this completeness came about because they did not know the Father. <coughs> incompleteness came about because they did not know the Father. So when they know the Father, incompleteness from the moment of they cease to exist. As one, one's ignorance disappears when he gains knowledge, and as darkness disappears when light appears, so also incompleteness is eliminated by completeness. Certainly, from the moment, that moment on, form is no longer manifest, but will be dissolved in fusion with unity. For now, their works lies cut. In time, unity will make the spaces complete. By means of unity, each one will understand itself. By means of knowledge, it will purify itself of diversity with a view towards you, the warring matter within itself like fire and darkness by light, death by life. Certainly, if these things have happened to each one of us, it is fitting for us surely to think about the all, so that the house may be holy and silent for unity. Like people who have moved from a neighborhood, if they have some dishes around which are not good, they usually break them. Nevertheless, the householder does not suffer loss, but rejoices. For if the place of these defective dishes, there are those which are completely perfect. For this is the judgment which has come from above and which has judged every person. A drawn two-edged sword cutting on the side and that. When it appeared, I mean the Logos, who is the heart of those who pronounce it, it was nearly, it was not merely a sound, but it has become a body, a great disturbance occurred among the dishes. Some were empty, others failed, some were provided for, others were removed, some were purified, still others were broken. All the spaces were shaken and disturbed, for they had no composure, no stability. Error was disturbed, not knowing that it should do what it should do. It was troubled, it lamented, it was beside itself because it did not know a thing. When knowledge, which is its abolition and approach, it will all you approach it with all its emanations, there is empty. Still there is nothing in it. Truth appeared. All its emanations recognize it. They actually greeted the Father with a power which is complete and which joins them with the Father. For each one loves truth because truth is the mouth of the Father. His tongue is the Holy Spirit who joins him 
and the truth attaching him to the mouth of the Father by his tongue. At the time we shall receive the Holy Spirit. This is the manifestation of the Father and this revelation to his image. He reveals his seed and self and explains it. For who is it who exists if it is not the Father himself? All the spaces are his emanations. They knew that they were, they stem from him as children from a perfect man. They knew that they had not yet received form nor had they yet received a name, every one of which the Father produces. If they at that time received form of his knowledge, though they are truly in him, they do not know him, but the Father is perfect. He knows every space which is within him. If he pleases, he reveals anyone whom he desires by giving him a form, by giving him a name, and he does give him a name and cause him to come into being. Those who do not yet exist are ignorant of him who created him. I do not say then that those who do not yet exist are nothing, but they are in him who will desire that they exist when he pleases, like the event which is going to happen. On the one hand, he knows before anything is revealed what he will produce. On the other hand, the fruit which he has not, which he has not, uh, which has not uh, been revealed, does not mind. Nor is it anything either. Thus, each space which on its part is the Father comes from the existing one who on his part has established it from the non existent. He who does not exist at all will never exist. What then is that which he wants him to think? I am like the shadow and phantoms of the night. When morning comes, this one knows that the fear which he had experienced, which he had experienced, was nothing. Thus, they were ignorant of the fact. He is the one they did not see. Since there had been fear and confusion and lack of confidence, and double-mindedness and divisions, there were many illusions which were conceived by him, the foregoings as well as empty ones, as if they were fast asleep and found themselves the prey of troubled dreams. Either there is a place to which they flee, or they lack strength as to come, having pursued and specified things. Either they are involved in inflicting blows, or they themselves receive bruises. Either they are flowing from they are falling from high places, or they fly off through the air, though they have no wings at all. Other times it is as if certain people were trying to kill them, even though there is no one pursuing them. Or they themselves are killing those beside them, or they are stained by their blood. Until the moment when they who are passing through all these things, I mean, they who have experienced all these confusions are awake, they see nothing, because the dreams were nothing. It is thus that they who cast ignorance from them as sleep do not consider it to be anything nor regard its properties to be something real but they renounce them like a dream in the night 
and will consider the knowledge of the Father to be the dawn. It is thus that each one has acted as if they were asleep during the time when he was ignorant and thus he comes to understand as if he were awakening. And happy is the man who comes to himself and awakens. Indeed, blessed is he who has opened the eyes of the blind. And the Spirit came to him in haste when he raised him, having given its hand to the one lying prone on the ground. It placed him firmly in his feet, for he had not yet stood up. He gave them the means of knowing the knowledge of the Father and the revelation of his Son. For when they saw it and listened to it, he permitted them to take a taste of the smell and to smell and to grasp the beloved Son. He appeared informing them of the Father, the Elimin Table One. He inspired them with that which is in the mind while doing his work. Many receive the light and turn towards sin. But material men were alien to him. I did not discern his appearance nor recognize him. For he came in the likeness of flesh, and nothing blocked his way because it was incorruptible and unrestrainable. Moreover, while saying new things, speaking about what is in the heart of the Father, he proclaimed the faultless word. Light spoke through his mouth, and his voice brought forth light. He gave them thought and understanding, and mercy and salvation, and the spirit of strength derived from the limitless mess of the Father and sweetness. He caused punishments and scourgings to cease, for it was they which caused men in need of massacre, astray from him in error and in chains. And he mightly destroyed them, but derided them with knowledge. He became a path for those who went astray, and knowledge for those who are ignorant, a discovery for those who sought, and support for those who tremble, a purity for those who are defiled. He is the shepherd who left behind the ninety-nine sheep, which he had not strayed, and went on in search of that one which was lost. He rejoiced when he had found, for ninety-nine is a number on the left hand, which was. The moment he finds the one, however, the whole number is transferred to the right hand. Thus it is with him who lacks the one. That is, the entire right hand which attracts that which it is deficient. Seizes, seizes it from the left, side and transfers it to the right. In this way then, the number becomes 100. The number signifies the Father. He labored even on the Sabbath for the sheep which he found fallen in the, into the pit. He saved the life of the sheep, bringing it from the pit in order that you may understand fully what the Sabbath is. You who possess says full understanding. It is a day in which it is not fitting that salvation be idle, so that you may speak of that heavenly day which has no night, and of the sun which does not set because it is perfect. Say then in your heart that you are this perfect, that you are this perfect day, and that in you, the light which does not fail, grace. Speak concerning the truth to those who seek it, and knowledge to those 
in the area of committed sin. Make sure footed those who stumble and stretch forth your hand to the sick. Now reach the hungry and set ease, set at ease those who are drunk. Foster men who love, raise up and awaken those who sleep. For you are this, for you are this understanding which encourages. If the strong follow the course, they are even strong. Turn your attention to yourself. Do not be concerned with other things, namely that which you have cast forth from yourself, that which you have dismissed. Do not return to them to eat them. Do not be not eaten. Do not be warm eaten. For you have already shaken it off. Do not be a place of the devil. For you have already destroyed him. Do not strengthen the last obstacles because that is reprehensible. For the lawlessness, for the lawless one, lawlessness, one is nothing. He harms himself more than the law. For that, one does his work because he's a lawless person. But this one, because he's a righteous person, does his work among others. Do the will of the Father, then, for you are from him. For the Father is sweet, and his will is good. He knows the things that are yours, so that you may rest yourself in them. For by the fruits, one knows the things that are yours, that are the children of the Father, and one knows his own, that you originate from the grace of his countenance. For this reason, the Father loved you alone, and it manifests itself in every place. And when it is mixed with matter, he gives his aroma to the light and into his grace, he causes it to ascend in every form and in every sound. For there are no nostrils which smell the aroma, but it is the spirit which possesses the sense of smell, and it draws it by itself or to itself and sinks into the aroma of the Father. He is indeed the place for it, and he takes it to the place from which he has come. In the first aroma, which is called, it is something a psychic form. It is something in a psychic form resembling cold water, which is, since it is in the soil, which is not but the heart, of which those who see. It it is hard. After all, it becomes soft and dry. If a breath is taken, it is usually hot. The cold aromas then are from the division. For this reason, God came and destroyed the division and he brought the hot to the aroma of the earth, so that the cold may not return, but the unit of the perfect God prevail. This is the word of the gospel of the finding of the aroma for those who wait for the salvation which comes from above. When their hope for which they are waiting is waiting, they whose likeness is the light in which there is no shadow, then at that time the aroma is about to come. The deficiency of man, however, is not because of the limitlessness of the Father who comes at the time of the deficiency. And yet, no one is able to say that the incorruptible one will come in this land. But the depth of the Father is increasing and the thought of error is not within him. It is a matter of falling down, a matter of being ready to set upright at the, at the finding of that one who has come to him. For this turning back is called repentance. For the reason, in corruption, as brief, it has followed him who has seen 
in order that you may find grace. For forgiveness is that which remains for the light and the deficiency. The word of the Peron. For the physician hurries the place in which there is sickness, because that is the desire which he has. The sick man is in a deficient condition. But he does not hide himself because the physician possesses that which he has. In this manner, the deficiency is filled by the Peron, which has no deficiency, which has given itself out in order to feel the one who is deficient, so that the grace will take him. Then from the area which is deficient and has no grace. Because of this, a diminishing occurred in the place which there is no grace. The area where the one who is small, who is deficient, is taken from them. He revealed himself as a peron, that is the finding of the light of truth, which has shined once because he is unchangeable. For this reason, they who have been troubled speak about Christ in their midst, so that they may receive a return and he may anoint them with an ointment. The ointment is the pity of the Father, who will have a mercy of men. But those whom he has anointed are those who are perfect. For the field vessels are those which are customarily used for anointing. But when an anointing is filled, the vessel is usually empty, and the cause of its deficiency is the consumption of its point. For then a break is drawn on with the power which it has. But the one who is without deficiency, one does not trust him beside him, nor does one pour anything out. But that which is the deficient is filled again by the perfect Father. He is good. He knows his plantings because he's the one who has planted them. And his paradise on this planet is the place of rest. This is the perfection in the thought of the Father. And these are the words of his reflection. Each one of his words is the work of his will alone and the revelation of his logos. Since they were in the depth of his mind, the logos, who was the first to come forth, caused them to appear, along with an intellect which speaks the unique word by means of a silent grace. It was called thought. Since they were in it before becoming manifest, it appeared then that it was the first to come forth. At the moment, listen to the will of him who desired it. And it is the will that the Father is at rest with which he is pleased. Nothing happens without him, nor does anything occur without the will of the Father. But this, but his will is incomprehensible. His will is his mark. But no one can, can know it. Nor is it possible for them to entreat on it in order to possess it. But that which he wishes takes place at the moment he wishes. Even if the view does not pass anymore. It is God's will. For the Father knows the beginning of them all as well as the end. For when their end arrives, he will question them to their faces. The end, you see, is the recognition of him who is seeing. That is the Father from whom the beginning came forth and to whom we return all who have come from him. For they were made manifest for the, for the glory and the joy of his name. 
and the name of the Father is the Son. And it is he who in the beginning gave a name to him, who came forth from him. He is the same one. And he begat him for a son. He gave him his name which belonged to him. He, the Father, who possesses everything which exists around him. He possesses the name. He has the son. It is possible for them to see him. The name, however, is invisible for me. It alone is the mystery of the invisible about to come. The ears completely filled with it through the Father's eyes. Moreover, as for the Father, his name is not pronounced. But it is revealed through a son. That then the name is great. Who well, then has been able to pronounce a name for him, this great name, except him alone, to whom the name belongs, and the sons of the name in whom the name of the Father is addressed, and the poor, and who themselves in turn are at rest in his name, since the Father has no beginning. It is he alone who gendered it for himself as a name in the beginning before he had created the elms, and the name of the Father will be over their heads as Lord. It is the rule of him, which is secure by his authority and by his perfect power. For the name is drawn from the lexicons in order. Is his name derived from common giving? Common name giving. But it is invisible. He gave a name for himself alone because he alone saw him. And because he alone was capable of giving himself a name. For he who does not exist has no name. For what name would one give him who did not exist? Nevertheless, he who exists also has his name. And he alone knows it. And to him alone the Father gave a name. The Son is his name. He did not therefore keep it secret to hidden. But the Son came into existence. He himself gave a name to him. The name then is that of the Father, just as the name of the Father is the Son. For otherwise, where would the compassion find a name outside of the Father? But someone will probably say to his, to his companion, who would give a name to someone who existed before himself? as if indeed children do not receive their name from the Father who gave them that. Above all then, it is fitting for us to think this point over. What is the name? It is the real name. It is indeed the name which came from the Father. For if it is he who owns the name, he did not. You see, Get the name of a Lord, as in the case of other others, because of the forms which uh, each one of them is going to be created. This then is the authoritative name. There is no one to whom he has given it, but it remained unnamed and uttered till the moment when. He who is perfect pronounced it himself, and it was he alone who was able to pronounce his name and see it. Then it pleased him then that his son should be his pronounced name, and when he gave his name to him, he who has come from the depth spoke of his secrets, because he knew that he the Father who was absolute goodness, because he knew the Father who was absolute goodness. For this reason, indeed, he sent this particular one, 
in order that he might speak concerning the place and in this place of rest from which he had come forth, that he might glorify the aroma, the greatness of his name, and the sweetness of his heart. Each one will speak concerning the place from which he has come forth, and to the region from which he received his essential being. He will ask him to return once again. And he, one from that place, the place where he was, because he tasted of that place, as he was nourished and grew, and his own place of rest is Pharaoh. All the emanations from the Father, therefore, are Pharaohs, and all his emanations are the roots. The one who caused them all to grow from himself. He appointed a limit, then became a manifest individual in order that he might in their own thought for that place to which they extend their thoughts as their root, which leads them upward through all heights to the far. They reached his head, which is rest for them, and they remain there near. It so that he said that they had participated in his face by means of embraces. But this of oh, this kind were not manifest because they have not reason about themselves. Neither have they been deprived of the glory of the Father, nor have they thought of him as a small, as small, nor a bitter, nor angry, but as sweetly good and perhaps sweet, knowing all the spaces before he came into existence and having no need of instruction. Such are these who possess from above something of this initial greatness as uh, they strain towards the unique and perfect one who existed for them. And they do not go down to hell. They have neither envy nor mourning, nor is death in them, but they rest in him who rests, without wearing themselves or becoming involved in the search for truth. They indeed are the truth, and the Father is in them. And they are in the Father, since they are, in, they are perfect and separable from Him who is truly great. They lack nothing in any way, but they are given grace and are refreshed by the Spirit. And they listen to their root, they have leisure for themselves. They in whom they will find this root and they will suffer in those who they saw. Such is the place of the blessed. This is their place. As for the rest, then, may they know in their place that it does not sweep them. After having been in the place of grace to say anything more, but he is the one in whom I shall be in order to devote myself and the time is to the Father of the all, the true brothers those upon whom the love of the Father is lavish, and who, in whose need is nothing of him is lacking. It is they who manifest themselves through the sins. They are in the truth and the time when I speak of the perfect life filled with the seed of the Father, and which is in the heart and in the path thereon. While his spirit rejoices, Meet and glorify him in whom it was because the Father is good, and his children are perfect and what he is him because he is the Father. Children of this time are those whom he loves.